Hi everyone, Liz here. Thanks for stopping by. So today we've got something a little bit different. It's crystal art cards, which is your diamond painting beads made into uh, greetings cards with some forever flowers, which both items are from Craft Buddy, which is craftbuddyshop.com. And I'm going to make a Mother's Day card. Uh, here in the UK, Mother's Day is actually um, in March and it's a week on Sunday here. Uh, I know some uh, other countries celebrate it in May, but in the United Kingdom we're in March. So I need to get my skates on and get this one done. Um, if you've been watching, uh, keeping track on my Facebook page, on my Instagram page, you'll see I've been madly making lots and lots of cards recently. And that's because the majority of our family's birthdays are in April and March. So I've got quite a few to do. Um, I'm only going to show you a couple today, don't worry. <laughs> okay, um, these uh, forever flowers are something you might not have seen before. And these are large chrysanthemums. This is a little starter pack that I got um, as a free gift from Craft Buddy and createandcraft.com or Create and Craft TV. Um, you, I just paid for the postage on this. I'm not sure this offer is still on and it was for Create and Craft Club members only. But it's just a little introduction to uh, Craft Buddy Forever Flowers. Um, it shows you how to make your flowers and it gives you your tools and everything there as well. So they're really easy to make. I've made these two, let's say they're chrysanthemums. Um, and I just thought they went really, really well with this card. Okay, so let's have a look at the card first. Um, the Craft Buddy cards, I mean, I've cut this one in half because I'm going to use that piece on something else. You can either use your shiny part or you can use it as a nice matte card. They're excellent quality, these cards, but I want my card a little bit bigger. So I've taken the back off this one and I will, so I'll keep that and use it for something else. All good crafters keep everything. <laughs> That's why we have hordes. <laughs> Okay, so I have, um, if this is an A3 card folded in half, I've put an A3 sheet of paper on the inside, which I'm going to use as the insert for the card. Let me just get you in. Sorry, I've got a dog crawling on my feet at the minute. She will be in. She knows there's something going on and she will be in. Let's just move some of these bits out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Oops. Okay, so when I'm actually making a card, uh, sorry if I, you already know all this, you can maybe fast forward this bit of the video. Um, I always like to put tape or sticky on this end of the insert so that when you fold it over, it opens that way. Okay, so let's do that. I've got my, one of my glue runner pens and just pop that along the length of the insert there. I will be putting another insert in this with a verse, but that's for my mum and that's between me and my mum, so I won't be showing you that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, so as you can see now, it automatically opens to your verse page. Brilliant. Okay. So the card will be going on the centre. Now I'm not sure if I want a piece of black card under that just to make that pop a little bit. I've put my verse uh, there, my little greeting on a little bit of black card. So I think I will mount this onto black card. Okay, so let me just get the flowers off there. And we just want a small border around the edge. I'm not one a great one for measuring, I have to say. So I do tend to just use my finger. Just get my guillotine. And you'll have to excuse me, I've had this a long, long time. So things do tend to get that little bit grubby. <laughs> I should have cleaned it, shouldn't I? Just say mucky puck to me. Have we cut that the right size? Yes, look. I oh, just want a little bit more of that. I just want a very, very fine black border there. So I just want a little bit more off that edge. Let's just line that up there. Okay, so that's I got that one done. Put my bits out the way. Okay, 
so yeah i think that's going to look a lot better just makes the card pop a little bit just frames it a little bit more and then i'm going to put my flowers down in this bottom corner and um, i will be hand delivering this card obviously if you were going to be putting it through the post you'd maybe need to think about putting large 3d items on it but because this is being hand delivered then uh, social distancing of course we have to meet outside unfortunately um but yeah that'll be fine okay so that's sort of the outline of the card and what i'm going to do so i'll just move those out of the way for now move my card out of the way and i'll show you how to make one of the flowers so as i say this is a large chrysanthemum and it does come with your instructions so you start here and um, any kits that need a flower um, made on a, a one of the tools does actually sorry just a second millie what are you doing stop it sorry she's um having a rummage in my bin at the moment <laughs> no idea why and um, so any of the flowers that need uh, a tool to be made do actually come with this tool which is great it's, what you make your flowers on too nice little wooden tool and i've found that actually putting one of the little stems back to front on the top there and then putting the next one oops onto it just helps you to build it i found that that's a little bit thick when you're building your flower around and i'll show you what i mean your flowers come in little packets this one came in the two different colours. They're absolutely gorgeous. The depth of colour on that is just wonderful. And they're all slightly variegated as well. So you've got some of them that are more red, some of them that are more deep. So when I made this one, I put my deeper colours to the bottom and then I just interspersed the, some of the um, darker ones in between towards the bottom. So you've got all your different colours. But wow! fantastic i love them and um, the thing that you do need to do though is separate them out they are all really really packed you get so many of them i don't know if you can see on here let me get the lighter color i think that'll show better won't it just pop those back in the little box over there i'm trying to be neat i'm the most untidy crafter in the world so this is neat for me <laughs> i think you could see there look how many there are just on there Lots and lots and lots. So the best thing to do is to separate them out as I've done here with all these. Let's just pop that away there. Um, and just let them settle for a bit so that they are all separated. Otherwise you can find when you start piling them up, even if you try to put them sort of at a, an angle to one another, they all start piling back up again. So I've had these out for a while now. As I say, you just literally peel some off and just keep peeling until there isn't any more you can use your tweezers i've been putting my tweezers into the little middle hole there i don't know if you can see that okay and it just makes them that bit easier to peel apart let so see you may even find as you're doing them that you suddenly find you've got an extra one to what you thought you had okay so yeah they're quite you can feel once you've got used to how they feel um, as as to one petal rather than several together. So that, that's all you do. And as I say, I've just left mine out a little bit just to sort of relax so that I can then mould them a little bit more. OK, so back to the tool. So we've got our, uh, as I say, I use two. You don't have to. You can just put the one. But you're building your flower upside down. So this will actually be the middle of the flower here and you're building it back to front so you put in all your bits onto there so you start off in your instructions here it says put your little um middle on then two petals so you just get your little hole there and just push it down over the plastic easy to do a little bit of pressure because obviously you don't want the hole slack but can you see there just pushes on then I'll do the next one because it says put two on. So again, just push that one on and I'm going to try and just turn it while it's on the stem there and make sure that those are slightly different ways. It is quite difficult with this one because they are small petals. Well, I say difficult. 
it's tricky, shall we say? Maybe just for me, so that your petals are all in between there. So you can see, as I say, if you don't leave them out that little bit, you do tend to find that they all just want to go back together in a clump. Or you could use one from each of your little piles that you've got and do it that way. Right, so then you have these little cups and these are sort of what give it um, a 3D effect. If you can see that there. Um, and it just adds a bit more bulk to your flower. So what you do is pop that onto your little stem. Again, just push down just a little bit of pressure and push that down there. And as I say, by having that extra little stem there, it's not having to go over the part of your tool. So it just seems to give it that little bit more um, ease of use, shall we say? Okay. So, and then we just put the rest of the petals on. And this one is 12 all together, so I've just got another 10 to pop on. Really quick and easy to do. Just say, try and put them each petal in between the last one. Just gives it that bit more fluffiness. If you can call flowers fluffy. But I think these are just so pretty. And my mum absolutely loves flowers. I know they do a carnation, um, but the colours just weren't right for my bird card that I've got. I needed pinks and the deep burgundy red. So I think my carnations that I've got are in red and white at the moment. And by the time I thought about putting the flowers on the card, it was a little bit too late to order them to get the card done. So there you go. Just uh, do that one. And that one, last couple. Okay. Do you know I could sit and do these all day? <laughs> oh dear. I do like to combine my crafts. Um, it's something that I've done crafting a long, long time and I've done card making a long, long time. So I do tend to find that I just get all my bits out and see where I go. You ought to have seen this desk before I decided what I was doing. It was covered. There was stuff everywhere. So then your little um, stem for the bottom, just literally push that right down onto it. Can you see that there? It's pushed right on. It pushes all the flowers together and then just pull that off and then just take that extra little stem out the middle and then you've got your little chrysanthemum. I think that's really, really pretty. If you want to push it together a bit more, can do just separate your petals out a little bit more but i think these are so cute as i say that's two i've done earlier now these stems are a little bit long for me so not using my best scissors which are my paper scissors um just using some old scissors i've got i'm just going to take that little bit can you see there just that little bit of stem there off the back and now i'm going to use some this is Pin flat glue gel. Oops. Oh, look, it's decided to nick one of my cup things. Okay. And just pop that around the top there, and it will just stop that from coming apart because obviously you don't want your back to come off there and just leave that for a bit to settle. That's the pin flare glue gel. I use this on all my 3D crafting just about. Um, it's my go to glue, it's a silicon glue. But it, well, it isn't silicon glue. It's like silicon glue. It looks like silicon, but it's colourless, silicon free, dries crystal clear and it's odourless. So there you are. And I just pop it into a syringe because it's easier to use. Just pull that back a little bit and put my little lid back on. That will need a good clean when I've finished here. As I say, I'm a very messy crafter. Okay, so pop the tool out the way. You do get all your little fastenings and all your little bits as well in that little bit there. there lots of flowers I can make with that. Made use of my green boat look <laughs> as well, putting all my bits in. Okay, so that's the flowers made. Pop the bit in the bin. Right, so let's have a look at this card. So let's get this stuck onto here first. Got some double sided tape and I'll just get this popped onto the back. You can use your glue if you prefer, but I must admit I do like my tape. Uh, just let it sort of like settle a little bit, double sided tape if you're using it before you start pulling it off because otherwise you can't get it. It sort of like it, it stays together 
And I'm just going to use my tweezers in between my double sided tape, it just helps get it off. If you put double sided tape on straight away and then try pulling it off, it just doesn't come off. It just needs a couple of seconds to just settle. Okay, so let's line this up on this black card. Let's put the right to the edge there. Okay, and then we're going to put double sided tape on the back. Oops, sorry if you're all thinking, oh, why aren't you using scissors? It's just years and years of card making. And it's one step that I just find it's easier to just tear my double-sided tape these days than it is to get the scissors out all the time. So I do apologise if it makes you cringe. <laughs> okay, and she shows. Oops, that one's not wanting to come up there. Let's just give it a. So these are my card making. Tools. They're actually um, fishing scissors. These I think. Uh, fishing. Scissors, oh my goodness, Liz. Uh, fishing tweezers that I got a long, long time ago. Um, a friend bought me them because she had some and I just looked at her enviously and she said, oh, they're, they're fishing ones. I'll get you some. Um, I now have about four pairs because it's one of those things you put them down and you had them two seconds ago and they just vanish. And then you're looking around forever for them. Okay, so that's nice. Straight there. So that little bit of black on that card just makes that pop and it matches your little birds there. I love this card. Those flowers are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can pick up oops, the sparkle on there. That is just superb. Those little purple. They're like an Abia and Aurora Borealis colour, which is like an oil on water coating that they put on the gems. And it just sparkles so much. Okay. Just put the rubbish away there. Right, so, okay, so I think we'll have the motif there, but I'm going to put the flowers on first. Now I'm going to use the 3G glue gel again to put these on and see how I want to arrange them. That one is still a little bit wet, so I won't put that one down. Yeah, I think that's quite pretty. Now then, the other thing I've got is a few little leaves, and I don't know if I want to put leaves or not, and please don't... These are just from years of card making. I collect everything. I've got bits everywhere. <laughs> Please don't shout at me if they're not the right leaves to go with these flowers. And that green is quite a nice green, but do I need a darker? Let me have a look. Maybe a darker colour or maybe a mixture of both. So this is the playing about bit. I love doing this bit. <laughs> no, I like the bit bigger ones best. So let's see. I'll just put a couple of leaves underneath. Yeah, just sets it off. Yep, like that. Okay, so we'll put the flowers on first with some more glue gel and then I'll slot the leaves in. But I will need to cut the stems off again because these are for cards. Okay, they will stick out a little bit. So put a good blob of your glue gel on. That one's going on the bottom there. So you can arrange them. It's your card. It's however you want to do it. And pop that one there. And glue gel also gives you, well, it's very forgiving. So you can actually, let me make sure you can see that, move them about that little bit more if you need to. Let's just flatten them out a bit. Okay, just cover that bottom corner there. And then let's get our two leaves. So use my old scissors. Oh my goodness, if anybody used my paper scissors for anything other than paper, I would be heartbroken. <laughs> okay, so just put a little bit of glue on the end there. And I'm just going to slot these up between the flowers. One there. And one there, and just arrange them slightly so that they're just showing. It just needs that little bit of green to lift it from the pink. Oops, put one in there. That's it. As I say, using glue gel just gives you that little bit of wiggle time. 
Okay, just get that set and then we'll just put, I think I'll put this on with glue gel because I just want it raised up slightly. So we'll just put a few blobs there. Okay, so that's with Love Mum on Mother's Day. It doesn't quite line up there, but never mind. I like that with the leaf. Just have the leaf slightly overlap there, so it just con gives a bit of continuity on the card. Sorry, I'm whittering to myself, aren't I? I hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay, so there you are. One Mother's Day card. It that way so you can see it full screen. I think those flowers look absolutely wonderful with this. Um, as I say, my mum is mad on a garden. Um, I think I've said before when I unboxed this card, um, I have got uh, a bird bath that my granddad made for me. Uh, well, he didn't make it for me, sorry, he made it uh, before I was born and I have it in my garden now. So that's quite precious. So it's a really personal card and I just love that. So that's the first card done and then I'm just going to do another quick card if you want to stay with me and see the next one. I'll be back in a second, just let me tidy all this away. Okay and I'm back. I've actually got two of these cards to make. Um, these are for my nephews. Um, if you've watched my previous videos you'll know that living in the Hull area, um, our football team, our local soccer football team, is called Hull City and their strip is black and amber so they've always been called the Tigers so having a tiger is uh, a wonderful thing <laughs> on a card to send to my nephews. Uh, one of them lives in Japan and the other one's down in London so um, I want to get these posted as soon as possible. Now you can just send them as the card as is um, there's no insert so you could just write on there and they do come with a nice envelope um, when you're posting cards as well, what I would do is turn them inside out so that when it's going through the postal system, there's nothing to catch if the envelope or anything um, gets caught in one of the machines and you can actually get them in the envelopes easier as well if you put them in inside out. It's a bit strange when you open your card and you think, what's this? But then it's quite easy then to just turn back the right way around and it will just stand up again. So just a quick tip is something I've always done because uh, I've always done a lot of cards with things on the front. But I love this tiger. Uh, again, from Craft Buddy. And as you can see, I've done two because I think they're wonderful. The colour shading in this, to get that depth of colour, there's four colours across that nose. And even the greys and then to the white, there's again four colours and it just gives you that depth and that sparkle. I don't know if you can pick it up. Uh, yeah that's great and you can buy the little um frames as well that these cards will fit in so if you want to send it as a present to somebody you could send the frame and when they've had the card up they can put it in the frame now obviously if you're doing that you don't really want a greeting on the card so i'm going to show you a little tip that um, i've used in the past with these cards and let's get yourself a little bit of acetate there and then should really use a scoreboard for this but I'll just uh, fold it in half there I don't know if you can see so you've got like a little bit of acetate there that's see-through sorry let's put the black card behind it see if you can see oh yeah you can see that so do that and make sure it's really really well folded down and then what you can do is slot your greeting then on the piece of acetate so it goes behind so I've got this say uh, that says for you nephew um, and you would just then stick it onto the piece of acetate and the acetate is then stuck onto the inside of the card so you're not actually then covering any of the picture it will still say for you nephew it will still say happy birthday or whatever you want to put on it there but then if they want to frame it, they just literally take that off or unpeel it or just cut it off the top. So you, you've still got your card. So it's just a way as if you do want these to go as cards, but you don't want to put anything on the front. Then I just find acetate's a really handy little tip there. 
So as I say, you would just fold that over there, stick that onto the front there, so it will sort of like stand up. And once it's been through the postal system, it will definitely flatten down. And it's just an easier way of doing it. Okay, but I'm going to mat and layer this card because I want it a little bit bigger. So again, I've cut the back off my card. Um, they do come all nicely logoed, these cards, and you've got um, crystalcard.com on the back as well if you need to find the website. But I always keep all my bits of card. You never know when they'll come in handy. Right, so I've got an 8 inch by 8 inch card. Again, I've cut down my insert ready to go inside. So we'll just put a little bit of tape on there and then just that there, fold it over and then when you open it up, it opens up to the greeting page. So I've covered this white, it's just a plain 8x8 white card, I've covered it in this gold colour and then I've cut myself a mat in black that I'm just going to pop onto the card there. So I've already cut this, you don't want to be seeing me cutting bits of card okay do that one and that one and where have i put my tweezers I tell you you have to have about eight pairs of tweezers because i can have them one second and pick them up the next or look for them the next and they've just gone they've just vanish i can be sat and i've not even moved same with scissors you sit in one place you put them down you look again vanished <laughs> they gone i haven't done anything with them okay so make sure your cards open in the right way as well i've done uh, a few wonky cards where they're upside down and all sorts okay so just slip that onto there and then we're going to put oh, i've not done that very straight i have to get my craft knife and do that in a second and then i'm just going to pop the tiger on the front of there And I always put an extra one across the back on these because you've put in a little bit more weight onto the card there with having the beads on those. Because they are cards and that these designs are made as cards, then they are that little bit uh, lighter weight. They're not full drill, they're not completely covered in drills. So they're not too heavy to go on your card. So let me just marry that up to that edge there. And just bear with me, I'm just going to get a craft knife. Okay, so I've just used a craft knife just to straighten that up a little bit. Um, there's never a mistake in craft, just a happy accident as everybody says. <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me do a few cards. I don't think I'm going to put a greeting on this. Um, I just don't want to detract from that tiger. I just think it's stunning. So I'm going to send them as is and I can put my little letters or notes or whatever I need to do in the middle. And then as I say, if they want to frame them, they can do. But yeah, that's my tiger cards. If you've enjoyed watching uh, me doing a really card making uh, with my diamond crystal art, uh, I say these both from craft buddy the cards that i've been doing uh, then please uh, press the like button and if you subscribe and press the little bell next to it then uh, you will be notified when the next videos come up so thanks for watching and i hope to see you all again soon bye for now